energy forecast for Wednesday, July 10th. Okay, so we have the moon in Virgo energy all day. And just a reminder, the Virgo energy is the fixer, the problem solver, the healer of the zodiac, meaning we have to really identify the actual problems before we can fix them. And typically speaking, with the moon in Virgo, we do need to kind of nitpick analyze, dissect our lives in order to truly identify the issue in order for us to really rack our brains on how it is that we're going to fix, heal, repair, and resolve said issues. Now, emotionally speaking, we are highly critical, highly judgmental of ourselves, of the people, of the world around us. Again, this is a stage of processing to figure out who and what needs to stay, needs to go. So the earthiness of the Virgo energy definitely providing us a little bit of a grounding energy to be logical and practical. It is ruled over by Mercury though, and Mercury of course is in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So we can expect that there is going to be a little bit of a challenge between the heart and head, a little bit of distance between the heart and head as well, as we really identify the gap that is preventing these two from getting in alignment. Of course, our heart and head have to be in alignment before we can engage the physical body to take action to make moves in the physical realm. So the moon in Virgo definitely going to give us some aha moments, some epiphanies here today on what we need to change, what we need to transform in our emotions, in our perspective, in order to get on the same page. Now, today is also the last day that Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, is going to be in Cancer energy. She is shifting into Leo energy here tomorrow on the 11th. There is an astral forecast available for your listening pleasure on what that particular energy shift is going to be about. And of course, your July zodiac forecast is going to illuminate this particular event and where it is going to manifest in your physical realm. So take a listen to that if you haven't already. And the Cancer Season e-guide, bust that out. We are moving through it. We have a lot of energy shifting to go on in this last part of Cancer Season. And this is going to be the start of it, the major change of heart, the pivot point in our heart space. Now that we have had the new moon in Cancer kind of come and go, Venus was definitely a part of that. She definitely had some revelations under that new moon in Cancer on what needs to change and transform. And we are going to get the party started once Venus enters into that Leo energy. So of course, the last day of any planet being in the final degrees of any sign means that there's going to be a little bit of an intensity there. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension forecast for a rundown on how this energy is going to manifest in the physical form definitely take a listen to that as well this is the point in time where the heart activations are definitely going to be popping off definitely going to be gaining our attention there there's a lot of emotion that we are now processing from the highest level of our awareness there is going to be a major change in our heart space as we pivot into the leo energy so with all of that being said there are 10 different aspects here today Eight of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Virgo energy going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who was retrograde in Aquarius energy. So again, we love Virgo energy interacting with Pluto in a positive way because Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche. Virgo energy does a deep dive in our lower level intellect of the mental plane, seeing as that's where Mercury, who rules over Virgo energy, also rules over us. That's where logic and practicality come into play. So Pluto kind of does a deep dive in the deep seated conditioning and programming of our psyche. Then we connect the dots to how that has impacted our inner dialogue, our inner narrative, our perspective of the world around us. And then we can flip the script where the Virgo energy is concerned and really empower us into a new perspective of what it is that we're thinking, feeling, and experiencing. So yes, there is an intensity that pops off with this particular interaction, but it's an empowering energy. We're starting to realize that the old narratives, the old dialogue, the old ways of looking at life are outdated. We have to improve. We have to do better. That's where the Aquarius energy that Pluto is currently retrograde in definitely pushes us to evolve, pushes us to do better, pushes us to improve. 
The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. So as you know, we've been bringing forth this new version of self that is more aligned with the higher self than it is the ego self. But because this is still a very new transition that we are trying to get used to, we're still questioning where it is that the parts of the old version of self, where they're holding us back, where they're limiting this new version of self from actually moving on and moving forward. Because this is an awkward interaction, it's not necessarily going to be bad, not necessarily going to be good, just going to be putting us in a more observation type of perspective to see where it is that certain narratives, certain ways of looking at things may have served us in the past, but in order to actually level up to the new vibration and frequency, in order to be a vibratory match to the outcome that we now want to manifest, we do have to change our inner state our inner state of emotion, our inner state of our mental plane and perspective in order to actually get in alignment so that we can engage the physical body to take action, to make moves, to make some progress towards the new wants, needs, and desires. The moon is then going to make a tough interaction with the north node in Aries energy. So that north node is trying to get us on the right path to be more independent, to go on a solo quest, a solo adventure, if you will, to get to know thyself, to grow, to heal, to evolve, just to basically move on. Because this is a tough interaction, this means that there's going to be a tension point, a conflict of some sort in order to illuminate where it is that we're having a hard time making this particular change and transformation. This is basically illuminating the growing pains that we are currently going through. Because this is not very supportive of an energy, we're not really thinking too far into the future right now. We're thinking about the present moment. Again, the moon in Virgo is an earth energy that connects us to the materialistic and physical realm of this present moment in the here and now. We don't want to think too far about the future because we have some situations, some bad habits, some bad perspectives, some bad feelings that we have to tackle in the here and now that are preventing us from actually seeing the goal, the vision, the dream uh, a little bit more clearly than what it is that we are currently seeing it in. We're looking for details. We're looking for information. We're looking for a different perspective. But the old version of self, that old inner dialogue, that old narrative, that old perspective is blocking the way. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in Gemini energy. So Virgo and Gemini have one thing in common, and it is their ruler, which happens to be Mercury. Mercury, again, currently in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in Leo energy. The moon getting into the boxing ring with Jupiter is going to highlight where it is that we are really resisting making the changes that we know that we need to make in order to grow up to move on, to actually evolve. Jupiter, in this particular case, where he usually brings confidence and optimism and he really kind of hypes us up to make the changes that we know that we need to make, this is a square. This is insecurities. This is fears. This is just doubts. This is the moon in Virgo being highly critical and super judgmental, not only of the world around us, not only of ourselves, but the different options, opportunities that we currently have available to us to move on. And so again, a square creates tension and conflict in order to illuminate where it is that we're resisting the changes that we know that we need to make. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury. Again, Mercury rules over the Virgo energy that the moon is in. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in Leo energy. So this is a beautiful interaction that really supports us Taking those tougher interactions that I just described, we're learning something from it. We had a light bulb moment. We had an aha moment, an epiphany moment that really illuminated where it is that we're actually blocking our own damn progress at this point, where it is that again, emotionally and mentally speaking, we are making our way into a new alignment where we're starting to realize that a new want, need, desire, passion from that Leo energy that Mercury is in is downloading us with a big, great, big, grand idea for ourselves, for our future, for our mission, for our purpose. The moon in Virgo is emotionally trying to dissect the pros and cons, 
of said idea in order for us to kind of weed away what is no longer serving us, what is no longer supporting us so that we can double down on the things that are going to help us build a bridge to get us away from where it is that we're at and closer to where it is that we desire to be. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in these final critical karmic degrees of cancer energy. So it's at this particular point where our, I'm going to say, realization of our new wants, needs, and desires, what we have to do for ourselves to promote happiness and healthiness and wellness in our emotional space, what it is that we no longer want to tolerate, what it is that we have to change and transform in our physical realms in order to bring new levels of safety, security, and stability back. We're very aware of the problem. What we're not so aware of right now is officially the plan, the strategy on how to fix said problem. But we are going to sit in the emotions, because again, cancer energy that Venus is in, emotions of where it is that again, we've recognized where it is that we're not happy, where it is that we're not feeling safe and secure and stabilized in relationship dynamics in our home environment, whatever the case may be. And again, the moon in Virgo, emotionally speaking, trying to figure out a solution for us to think about in order to see how our physical body responds to said solution to see if that is going to be the plan and strategy on how we're going to reconcile particular situations, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. The moon is going to interact with Pluto again, this time not as favorable as we kick the day off in. This is a little bit of an awkward interaction. So we're definitely stepping back from the heart activations that we just had with the interaction with Venus. We're stepping back and we're saying, huh, where in my egoic programming did this particular seed get planted? Why am I defensive? Why am I being overprotective? Why is it that I am feeling real and raw and vulnerable? Why are my insecurities, fears, and doubts propping up right now when I just figured out a potential solution to some of the issues that I want to put behind me? Again, Pluto really dissects the inner conditioning of our psyche. This is like taking us back to to childhood. Why do we feel like this? Who planted this seed? Why do I look at life in this particular lens? The moon in Virgo is going to help us dissect where that seed got planted and by who. And we are going to have the opportunity to flip the script into something a little bit more powerful, a little bit more empowering in order for us to feel like we have control, control over our automatic mental disposition, over our default emotional programming, the minute that you're aware of it, that you're conscious of it, you can do something about it. But this particular energy is trying to illuminate those particular deficits, that particular default program, programming, that particular, let's call it blurb, that is having us stuck in a looping pattern, a looping behavior, and therefore creating resistance to the changes that we know that we need to make. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the heart and soul of the Leo energy, going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibility, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy. Pisces energy, of course, is our intuition. It's our belief system. It's our emotions. It's our pain, our trauma, our healing. It is our soul, our spirit. It is our karmic contracts. Of course, Saturn retrograde in this Pisces energy, definitely pulling us inward to see where it is that we have to boss up within ourselves, where we have to get a little bit more disciplined within ourselves to put into practice some of the things that we've already learned that we're failing to actually put into action. Mercury and Saturn definitely going to bring a somberness to our mental plane. We're going to get super focused, hella concentrated on what we want to build, what we want to create. Again, a lot of the issue right now is that we're holding on to old, outdated belief patterns. When we kind of flip the script, when we understand that that served the old version of self and it is no longer serving the higher version of self, we are able to kind of edit, to revise, to revamp all those retrograde rewords 
and really flip the script on what it is that we're now focused upon, especially with the new goal, dream, and vision that we want to absolutely manifest. And Mercury being in the heart and soul of the Zodiac is aligning our heart and head to understand what it is now that we want to do, what we want to pursue, what we need to start talking about as far as future plans go. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron. So Chiron being the wounded healer, again, earlier on in the day, we had an uncomfortable interaction. This one is a pleasant one. This one is us seeing that we are able, when we're able to bring something into our awareness, that we're able to flip the script into something more powerful, something that allows us to feel a little bit more in control, emotionally speaking. We're feeling the growth. We're feeling the ability to heal thyself. We are... 100% realizing that the power of our mind is going to make or break our success. The last thing that we have going on here today is the sun in this Cancer energy trining beautiful interaction with Saturn retrograde and Pisces energy. So we know that a trine means that we're working with like-minded elements. We have Cancer energy and Pisces energy. They're both water signs. So this is water on water action. Water on water is, first of all, very cleansing, very healing, very transformative, very emotional, very intuitive, very dreamy. So the sun, again, being at the point that it's at in the cancer topic and theme of this calendar, we are pivoting away from being too immersed in the past, too attached to the past, too connected to the old we are pivoting now since the new moon in Cancer. We're starting to realize what we have to build and create within ourselves, within our physical realm to support our future vision of who it is that we want to be, what it is that we want to be doing and who we want to be doing those things with. The sun is our life force energy. The Cancer energy is the foundation, the structure that we need to build emotionally and mentally speaking within ourselves to support new boundaries being put into place, especially where relationship dynamics, family dynamics are concerned. Saturn, again, is about the structure, this role, this responsibility that we have to ourselves, to the people around us. This is definitely putting us in a situation where we're a little bit more, I'm going to say, serious about our futuristic plans. We're definitely grounded in a particular sense with the moon in Virgo for us to kind of lose ourselves in a dreamland type of situation. Again, in order to see how our physical body responds to hypothetical and potential types of situations and circumstances that we're currently contemplating and manifesting. So this is going to kind of tap into a new self-discipline. This is going to illuminate a new strength within us, a new ability to kind of boss up to new roles and responsibilities to fulfill and honor the commitments that we've made previously that we want to kind of wrap up, if you will so that we can start building a new foundation, a new structure towards new goals, new visions, new dreams. This is going to be a refresher, a renewer and renewal of our soul, of our spirit, of the vision, the goal, the dream that we now want to build, create and bring to life. <laughs>